Well, here we are, episode number eight already. We're traveling north for this episode to the very well-known and well-touristed town of Lansing for a quick tour of the sand dunes before heading further north to the seaside town of Cervantes, 175 kilometers from Perth. Before I start, however, I just want to say good day and thanks to all of you that have subscribed to my channel this year, and I cannot wait to see what the rest of the year holds. I've got a lot planned and it's your support that motivates me to grow Epic Drives West in Australia. Anyway, let's get rolling in another Epic Drive. Roll the intro. This is Epic Drives Western Australia, the channel dedicated to showcasing this great state. Join me, my family and my mates as we travel this truly amazing state we call home and discover what makes this place truly epic. New episodes are released on the first of every month. Why not subscribe? And please don't hesitate to like, share or comment. And don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Named after an island, just a five minute boat ride from the mainland, Lancelin was named by the French expedition under the command of Captain Nicholas Bowden in 1801. The name honors P.F. Lancelin, a scientific writer and author of the World Map of Sciences. WA has a love affair with Lancelin, popular with both local and international tourists, and known mostly for its crisp white dunes, clean beaches, and laid back vibe. It's good for sandboarding, dolphin spotting, and of course, fishing. of Lancelin and fenced off to the public lies the Lancelin Defence Training Area, used as an air bombing range and for Navy clearance diver explosives training. It's also been used for SAS and counter-terrorism training. The range has often been used by US and other armed forces too. simply would not be a proper visit to Lancelin without exploring the immense dunes. So on our way out, we traverse the 220 hectares of sand. It pays to drive extremely carefully as deaths and serious injuries have occurred here. Always be aware that sand dunes are constantly changing in size and shape and may end up in steep, sudden drop-offs. Some other very important factors to always be wary of is other vehicles, sandboarders and pedestrians. It does get extremely busy, especially in the holiday periods, in a small town with a population of around 600, close to over 2,500. The sand dunes are open from 8am to 7pm, is patrolled by rangers as well as the police. Located north of Lancelin is Wedge Island. The name mainly refers to the mainland settlement, but also refers to a 400 metre long wedge shaped island located just south of the point. Wedge Island was named after government surveyor Charles Wedge in 1875 by Staff Commander William Edward Archdeacon, 
who was in charge of the Admiralty Survey of the coast of Western Australia. The settlement is now home to approximately 350 beach shacks on unvested land that are used by cray fishermen and holiday makers. For over 70 years, the settlement at Wedge has been much more than just a physical location. With stunning beaches to enjoy and excellent fishing, the lifestyle here, which has all but disappeared elsewhere, is thriving and gives Wedge a unique vibe. Perhaps the most endearing aspect of Wedge is the fact that this community is open to visitors and no traditional government services are actually required. This is perhaps perceived as a threat by local government officials. This freedom of lifestyle along with self-regulation within the community itself is a difficult concept to grasp. And as such Wedge is under constant threat of closure. If you're like me and dread the thought of having iconic West Australian locations like Wedge shut and would like to show your support, I've put a link to their website in the description below. North along the beach, we reach a headland, impassable by four wheel drive and turn off the beach where we become bogged at the exact same spot I had problems with on our last trip out this way. A combination of soft sand and bad angles on this section of track was a challenge yet again for my Hilux. With tyres down to 12 psi, max tracks and a bit of diesel fumes added where necessary, I managed to make light work of this troublesome bit of sand track. Eventually the four-wheel drive track out of Wedge hits the blacktop at the small settlement of Grey. With daylight fading fast, we decide to head back to Perth and continue our journey a few days later. The beachside settlement at Grey is very similar to the settlement of Wedge Island. It's home to beach shacks that have been here for years. Lunchtime in Grey, just on the beach. A bit windy, but to be expected this time of year. Uh, Barbies don't really work when it's windy, so I had um, some sort of cooked sausages and didn't bother airing down, which should always air down but we're only doing literally 50 meters on the beach so we plowed our way through and now we're coming off the beach hitting the highway again we traveled just 15 kilometers north and reached the pinnacles these are limestone formations created from seashells in an earlier era when the planet was rich in marine life blown inland the shells form large mobile dunes the manner in which the pinnacles were formed is a subject of debate. 
Just up the highway from the Pinnacles and next to the town of Cervantes, we stopped to visit Lake Thetis. This is one of only a few places in the world with living marine stromatolites. The lake water is alkaline and nutrient poor, which is the ideal habitat for microbial amphiopods and crustaceans, as well as small fish that thrive in the saline environment. With the end of another day of our northern adventure, we make camp at a spot north of Sandy Cape. With campfire season finally here, we sit back and roast marshmallows, whilst relaxing to the sound of the ocean. Yet again I find myself at peace with the sounds of Mother Nature, a warm fire, and my family the only welcoming distraction. It's in moments like these that I realise I want my boys to be able to provide this experience to their children and for generations after to find their place in the true wonder of nature's ability to make you feel at home in the middle of nowhere. I feel more at home here on the road than I've ever felt chasing the dream whilst working. And on that note, I'll leave you with the sounds of Sandy Cape and I'll hopefully see you next time on Epic Drives Western Australia. Just airing up, tyres gonna hit the highway again at Sandy Cape. Drove north of Sandy Cape along the four wheel drive track, three or four kilometres where we stayed. And just airing up. And one of the great things about having a compressor like mine, the cheap sort of ones, is you're forced to open your bonnet and have a have a sort of check round for any obvious oil leaks or that sort of thing and check the air filter and uh, yeah it forces you to to do it every time you air up which is always a good idea and something that's easy to be missed if you enjoyed watching and you haven't already please help me grow my channel by subscribing liking commenting sharing all the good stuff and check out my all new patreon page if you're a true epic fan why not don the shirt or the trucker hat that are now all up for grabs at the Epic Drives Western Australia Etsy store. All are linked in the description below. I'm Dan, this has been Epic Drives Western Australia. Catch you in. Ooh.